Hey everybody, I'm Coach Troy and today I want to talk about using stretch cords. Now I know a lot of you travel, you're on the road and you don't have time to swim. I tell you what, carrying stretch cords, it's a great way to supplement your swim training but also use it as a substitute when you can't hit the pool. It's really good for maintaining strength and conditioning and even working on your technique. So there's a lot of benefits and I travel frequently so I always carry my stretch cords with me. Even if I'm in the hotel room, I know I can get a decent swim workout in using the stretch cords. But before we even get into using stretch cords, I want to talk about some warm-up stretches you want to do prior to doing any workout or even getting in the water for that matter. So one stretch would be to take your elbow like this, stretch your tricep and your lat, you pull over like this and then you do that with your other arm. And I'm just demonstrating, certainly you can add more time. Another one is to take your arm, pull it across your body like so. And then you do it with the other arm, pull across your body, stretches out your shoulder. And then another one is to open up your chest a little bit. You go like this, a little bit more dynamic. Opens up your chest. Again, do this as much as you want to get nice and loose. And then, of course, your arm circles like this. And then you take it back like this and do it with the other arm as well. So lots of different stretches you can do to get to feel nice and loose before you start your swim workout, before you start your stretch cord workout. The other nice thing about stretch cords is that you can take them to a race. As you know, in a lot of triathlons, you can't get in the water to warm up before the race starts. And that's a real disadvantage because you never want to start a, whole, a hard swim being cold. You know, you want to be nicely warmed up. So you take your stretch cords, you can do some technique work, do some warming up prior to the start, and you'll be a lot better off when the gun goes off. Okay? So come on over here and I'll show you some exercises and some drill work to do with your stretch cords. Okay, here I am with my stretch cords, and you know, stretch cords, they're a brand. There's a lot of different surgical tubing on the market, um, a lot of different models as well. You can see this one just has regular handles. Some have paddles, hand paddles, which are more conducive for freestyle swimming, but these work just, just as well. Also, there are different resistance levels, and this is a fairly thick one, but don't worry about that so much. You really don't need them to be of super high resistance. In fact, that's kind of defeating the purpose because we're looking for repetitions and not just low reps when we're using uh, these types of cords. So first thing you want to do is to get in that, get your hands in that freestyle swim position and cock your wrist at about a 30 degree angle, okay? And then what you do is you step away so that you get a little bit of resistance from the anchor wherever your cords are anchored or whatever they're anchored to. And then you bend over at the waist, you bend your knees a little bit, bend over at the waist, and keep your back straight, okay? Nice, neutral back position, flat spine. Now from here, there's a lot of things you can do, and I like to start off with a little bit of technique work. So essentially what we're gonna do is just practice sculling a little bit, just a little bit of a sculling motion, just like you would do in the water. That first part of your swim stroke, that first part of the catch, a little bit of a sculling motion. All right, warm up a little bit, good technique, recruiting all the, all the motor units that are necessary for good freestyle stroke. Get your good stretch. Next thing I want you to do is to think about that, what's known as an early vertical forearm where you get your elbow up, elbow up, like this. Early vertical forearm where you're using all that surface area of not only your hand, but also your forearm, okay? Almost as if you're pulling yourself up on a barrel in the water. Visualize that, okay, or grabbing that ladder, that rung of a ladder and pulling yourself past it. A lot of different ways to think about it. Early vertical forearm, another technique issue. From there, you can get into that full part, the entire stroke itself, where you get the early vertical forearm, come all the way through and extend. And with the other hand too, early vertical forearm and extend back. Full extension at the tricep, okay? And another thing you can do as you come through is you can recover with a high elbow, high elbow, just as if you're swimming freestyle stroke and recovering with that high elbow, all right? So little technique things you can work on, whether you're using these as supplementary training or as a warm up before your race. Next thing you can do are some conditioning exercises. You can do traditional sets of say, six by 25 with 15 to 20 seconds rest, or just do sets of 100 reps Whatever is best for you, some people will even do straight five minutes or 10 minutes. So you can get into almost like a butterfly stroke, early vertical forearm and extend back. 
three, four, five, and then go one arm at a time. One, two, three. Get that early vertical forearm, really feel it in the chest and your lats. Don't drop that elbow. You don't want to do this. That's not the idea. That's a different exercise entirely. Get that early vertical forearm, both arms. Start banging out those reps. You can do this in your hotel room. Do it at home. Do it after your swim practice. It's going to help make you stronger. But technique is really important, so make sure that you are focused on that early vertical forearm using these larger muscles in your chest and your lats and getting that full extension with the tricep. Okay? Work on all those different things with your stretch cords and I know it will help take your swimming to the next level. Until next time, train safe and train smart.